Manchester. Speaker, this government continues to interfere with democratic process. The SNC Lavalin scandal, and now we see, based on the Mass Casualty Commission, that the public's then public safety minister and the prime minister put pressure on Commissioner Lucky. Why did the Prime Minister and the Public Safety Minister use the death of Canadians to advance their political agenda? Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Foremost, uh, I want to express on behalf of the government, and I hope all members of this chamber, our sympathies and our condolences to the families of the victims. Uh, I had the opportunity. I'm just going to make a comment. It's shameful I can't hear what's being said. So I just want to remind everyone to really just keep your voices down so we can hear the answer. From the top, uh, Minister. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for uh, creating some pause in this chamber. As I express, I hope on behalf of all members, our condolences and our sympathies with the families of the victim, some of whom I've had an opportunity to meet with. Um, this continues to be a very difficult uh, moment for them. Uh, in the interim, uh, we know that the Public Commission is doing its important work independently of government. Uh, there needs to be due process. There needs to be a trauma-informed process. This, and at the end of the day, we will do whatever we can to support that process so that there can be justice for the families they deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Cumberland, Colchester. Mr. Speaker, it's very clear from recent news reports that the Mass Casualty Com Commission confirms that the Prime Minister and the then Public Safety Minister interfered with, sadly, Mr. Speaker, the release of numbers of, release of, numbers of casualties. We know that what the quote says is that in reference to victim numbers, that is 100 percent Minister Blair and the Prime Minister. Isn't that true, Mr. Speaker? Here, here. I just want to remind the honourable members when referring to someone else in the chamber, refer to them as their title but not by their name. The honourable minister for public safety. The honourable minister for emergency preparedness. Uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm very happy to advise this House that this issue has already been dealt and, and with the Mass Casualty Commission, in which the Commissioner of the RCMP has confirmed for the Commission that no such direct direction or pressure was ever exerted by me or by any other member of this government. But, Mr. Speaker, among the important work of, of the Mass Casualty Commission is examining a number of the significant communication challenges that that, that event in, involved. We look forward to have to stop the minister. I'm having a hard time, and I'm about 20 feet away from the minister. So I'm going to ask everyone to be quiet and maybe ask the minister to take it from the top, because I, I, I missed most of that. The Honourable Minister. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to advise this House that this matter was dealt with a number of months ago, in which the Commissioner of the RCMP has confirmed for the Mass Casualty Commission that no such direction or pressure was ever exerted by myself or any other member of this government. But, Mr. Speaker, among the most important work of the Mass Casualty Com Commission is to examine the important communication challenges that were evident during this tragic event. We look forward to a fact-based findings and recommendations for improvement. Well, member for Barry Innisfil. Okay, so, Mr. Speaker, this is 